Hello, my name is Dr. Matthew Aswan, and I'm uh, with ASL Environmental Sciences based in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And I'm here today to talk about observations of wind force dynamic processes in sea ice using a logarithmic ice profiling sonar in the coastal waters of the Nunatsiavut region of Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. So a brief overview of my talk today, we'll be looking at a bit of the methods using the ESL ice profiling sonar and our new log IPS profiling sonar. We will be examining whether acoustic backscatter is brought out of saturation for open water, as well as the ability of our sonar to detect multiple targets, the backscatter amplitude and target type is observed, as well as compare a few acoustic profiles to regional sea ice and weather. So the ice profiling sonar of, of ASL is, um, is typically uh, deployed in a taut line upward looking configuration as shown here. The mooring will usually have a number of other uh, instruments on it, such as CTD or ADCP. And um, we also have uh, an acoustic release here at the bottom and an anchor to hold the whole thing down. And uh, the original ice profiling sonar was actually developed uh, collaboratively with the Institute of Ocean Sciences at uh, with DFO, Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada. And ASL was able to um, commercialize this, uh, this product back in the, in the 90s. And it was first used to uh, look at sea ice um, off of Sakhalin Island in Russia. Additional work was conducted to uh, develop the EPS-5 which featured a, uh, a higher sampling rate, greater amount of data storage, an AD resolution of 16 bits, um, a more a variable receiver gain as opposed to fixed, improved power consumption, more phases, more pings per target, as well as the ability to profile waves. So it was much improved over the, uh, the fourth generation yips. The existing linear detector in the EPS-5 detects relatively small instantaneous dynamic ranges at point in time and uh, usually results in saturated targets. Whereas the logarithmic detector that we are, uh, are testing on our new sonar, the 85 decibel instantaneous dynamic range, which would allow for recording weak targets, but also recording amplitudes for strong targets. Our goal is to basically record weak and strong targets out of saturation with enough range that weak targets don't fall below the noise floor and strong targets don't get clipped. So a bit of history in terms of the testing of this new log EPS profiling sonar, the originally prototyped and constructed back in 2013. Following that in 2014, we conducted some initial field tests just some local waters here in Santa Chinlet, just north of Victoria. Of course, Pacific water doesn't have ice in this part of the world. So we took it up to the Arctic and deployed it 2015 to 2016. And then again, 2017 to 2018 for uh, field uh, testing in the Arctic and worked out some additional bugs with the uh, circuit board. And then we finally uh, were able to uh, put this to the real test and uh, set out to uh, do, develop a collaborative program with our partners out in uh, Maine at the New Nazi Regional Government. And we put out a um, pair of sonars out uh, by uh, an, a feature of interest in their waters, um, no, locally known as a rattle. So what is a rattle? Well, rattle is essentially an area of open water that is surrounded by ice. So this is, uh, if you haven't guessed it, if you're a sea ice person, it sounds very familiar to a uh, term we would refer to as a polymia. Now, a rattle is a, a local term that is uh, commonly used by uh, people on the East Coast. And um, that's, uh, that's all fine, but there's a lot of interest though about uh, these features because they tend to be open throughout the winter. So the, uh, the implications on local biology and the impacts on the sea ice are of great interest, hence our, uh, our partnership to do this work. So we put out our, uh, our moorings at this site do, uh, due east of the, uh, the rattle, which is outlined here in blue. So we get an idea of what is happening with the sea ice upstream of, uh, of this rattle and uh, how it's moving around. So this is a measurement that took place between February 2020 to October 2020. 
And I'm pleased to report that uh, we actually have uh, resumed this study with a new deployment this year, and there's plans for future deployments to, uh, to monitor this site for a, uh, for a long period of time, which is, which is great. So moving along, we would, uh, so yes, the, uh, the actual deployment was done by snowmobile. It was a through ice marine deployment. Uh, so unfortunately it was, uh, was impossible to get this particular, the first deployment here out uh, during the open water season, but that's okay. We do deployments through ice. And in this case, it was um, put through ice into about a hundred meters of water depth and uh, was manually deployed here in the, um, in, of course, now we're looking uh, uh, configuration. So the initial data from this, uh, this is looking at May, 2020, where uh, we're seeing here uh, open water with a sea state that is uh, it's pretty wavy. We got uh, lots of waves in the profile here, but they're diminishing. They're diminishing right down to calm seas pretty much until we start to see the influx of ice that's starting to move into the area. It's infecting into the area being blown in by the winds. And we're seeing right away that this ice is quite rubbly and we're seeing keels down to five meters. And eventually in the lower panel here, we're seeing keels as deep as eight meters. And if I were to extend this diagram further into uh, later sets, we start to see keels as deep as 10 and 13 meters. So a little analysis of the, uh, of the sonar here in terms of how it, how it functioned with respect to the winter versus the full year. This is a look at the number of observations on the y-axis compared to the acoustic backscatter counts on the x-axis here. And this is uh, to the fourth, 10 to the fourth power on this scale. And uh, the red is looking at the winter season where there's ice present compared to the entire season that includes the open water season. So that runs from February to November, 2020. And we see that in um, both cases, the observations tend to zero as acoustic backscatter approaches the limit of the AMD around 65,000 counts. But red is mainly dominated by ice, has a single peak here on the, on the graph just around the uh, 4.2 mark, 4.2 times 10 to the four uh, counts. This is red is mainly dominated by ice. Now the blue is showing the ice and the open water season and open water is brought out of saturation. This open water period appears to have two peaks you can see here and here. And we're not entirely sure why at this point, but most likely explanation for this is the variability on the sea state in cases where we had um, extremely high and uh, intense sea state versus calm sea state. So this is something that would be further assessed with our, with our ongoing deployments. A comparison of target counts. So we have a comparison of our, of our linear, our IPS-5 to the new log IPS-6 or well, yep, I should say, and the uh, sixth generation. The linear, um, um, the linear performance here is uh, comparable to that of the log. Is, is basically the message we have here. We do we do see that the log ips in 2014-15 had a had a pretty good performance on detecting five targets, but overall, it's very uh, similar uh, performance here. It behaves very similar. Now, looking at some actual ice features with this uh, sonar. So these are three panels of data looking at a period in April and in the lower here in May. So in April 2020, we see um, two layers of ice here, which is, um, yeah, so it's not, nothing surprising there. So maybe a bit of rafting going on. And we also see this feature here, this little streak, which might be the uh, presence of some frazzle ice in the water column. Now, looking at the weather records at Maine, the temperatures were hovering around zero Celsius with a wind speed of about eight meters per second. So not entirely conducive to the formation of frazzle. However, it is entirely possible the temperatures offshore were a few degrees colder and or the water temperatures were right near the freezing point of salt water. So it's, it's entirely possible that some frazzle was forming just beneath the surface and we were detecting it here on our, our profile. On the right hand side, we see a period of deformed ice coverage with four meter keels 
a low backscatter unconsolidated ice over here on the right. And then we've got some higher consolidated backscatter ice here denoted by the uh, bright red. The third panel on the bottom here again is showing a multi-level uh, ice cover, multi-layer with lower amplitudes in the first panel, likely due to the ice type. But the larger dynamic range of EF seems to have peered into the ice a short distance, hence we're seeing a, uh, an overall thicker profile here on the, on the, prof on the, uh, the data profile. Now what's going on during this period? So we had a bit of a look at the synoptics in the region and well, what was happening was a series of low pressure systems was moving through the region. And um, in fact, these, uh, as I'll show in a, in a future slide, some of these uh, low pressure systems are actually turning to the Northwest and heading up to Baffin Bay and affecting the, uh, the movement of sea ice here through um, the formation of some really strong westerly wind events. So if you just watch the animation of the satellite here, you can see the, um, what's happening is we see the ice is being flushed and pushed away from the shore and then opening up a, a significant amount of open water here. The uh, ice uh, archive from the Canadian Ice uh, Service is showing the, uh, a similar story here. So we have, initially we've got our uh, April 22nd coverage, which is showing some uh, one to three tenths ice coverage the area here and uh, some nine to tenths coverage up in the north here and uh, some areas of four to six tenths. And then when we um, cycle forward a day after that, that intense wind, we see now we've got some open water less than one tenths in this area here and overall ice concentrations have appeared to have shifted to the east a bit, um, showing the movement of this ice. And um, there's a really rough look at the, uh, the weather conditions observed at Maine at the time. Apologies for the uh, crudeness of this graph, but the key thing to look at here is the, um, the direction at which these winds are coming from. So as you can see here, this uh, westerly vector here from around hovering around the 270 degree mark, plus or minus, we have some pretty intense events showing wind speed on the orange, on the, uh, the solid, uh, axis here, we see some pretty intense westerly wind events occurring repeatedly through the month of April, which is, uh, which is driving out this wind. And the wind speed at the mooring site was likely stronger being offshore. Now this is uh, representative of the synoptics that are taking place at the time, as I have mentioned, so that you can see here on the, uh, the composites are looking at mean vector wind speed and directions and sea level pressure. There is a series of low pressure systems that were moving through this area and uh, migrating up along the coastline to the Northwest. This is heading up, into, up toward Greenland here. And there's another big low pressure center right over, uh, right over the Labrador coast here on the, the final pattern here. So this is looking at um, the 21st to the 24th of April. So overall, we've shown a uh, relatively successful uh, uh, evaluation of our uh, equipment so far. Uh, the air-water interface is brought out of saturation. Our target detection behaves similarly to our traditional LIP systems. And there is a possible relationship between target type and amplitude. And then finally, we have the ability to see multi-layering of variations in backscatter strength through the ice. Observations of storm-induced sea ice dynamics ice motion and deformation are observed within the rattle area, and we will be continuing to monitor these with our current deployments. And uh, we look forward to reviewing our uh, next data set, which should be coming out of the water within, uh, well, pretty soon now, so. All right, well, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we'll, uh, I will uh, wait for questions. Cheers.